Figuring out how to run this part efficiently can make you rich. It's about to get crazy. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. And here is Stuart. Stuart, right here at the West Coast Training Center. And today we're gonna to talk about advanced fixturing. How to make parts efficiently so you can actually make good money in this trade. All right, before we get started, I just wanna invite you guys to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And if you want us to teach on something, please put it in the comments and there's a good chance you'll see it in a future vlog. All right, so Stuart. Yeah. The fixture, it's a beast, right? Fixturing. Uh, so one thing I want to say about this particular fixture is this fixture came from our brains, right? Because fixturing is a true art in this trade. Your ability to outthink and outcompete the machinist down the street, the company down the street, so that you can actually run more parts at a time, thus giving you the ability to drop your prices is everything. If you can do it, efficiently and get those prices low, then you can secure long-term contracts, right? If you can't, then your customers will always be looking for the cheaper part elsewhere. So one thing that I'll say starting off is that this, although it doesn't look like it, it's a five axis fixture, okay? If we actually turn and we look over here in the machine, you see a super heavy duty shunk vise. And that's what we use for single parts when we actually rock the five axis back and forth and get after it in some crazy aerospace metals, right? But what if you're doing a simple part on a five axis? Most of the work holding and fixtures that you see are all about holding one part center and then it basically drops down and then you can flip it, flip it, flip it, and put holes all the way around the part, right? And you have access to the part from every angle, which is awesome, and it gives you the ability to run many different sides at the same time, which is the brilliance behind five axis, but you lose something. You lose your ability to actually run a lot of parts, all right? So to compete in this trade in a global economy, you gotta figure out how to actually maximize your workspace and run as many parts as possible on that machine so that you can actually walk away from the machine and allow the machine to actually run by itself, all right? But you don't really see that in five axis machining because of the need to actually hit the part from the different angles. So this is a fixture that we came up with that allows you to do just that. So what's great about this fixture? Well, this fixture actually fits on this five axis table. It allows you to actually run 16 different parts at a time. You can flip down, you can actually hit all the parts on the lower level, and then you can move up and drop down, and you have more parts on the center level, all right? It gets a little complicated, and that's why I asked Stuart to join me on this video because he's gonna come in here as a technician and he's gonna explain the process, why we designed the fixture and how it works exactly. And then you can bank that information, all right? And then when the production work comes and the jobs are simple and small and you think, you know what? It's too small for my five axis. You can grab that information and be like, you know what? I can actually build this crazy fixture run a whole bunch of parts at the same time, walk away from the five axis, and crank out a million little parts complete efficiently. All right, Stuart, are you yeah. ready? Oh yeah. All right, so I'm gonna walk out, and Stuart's gonna take over now. Boom, here you go. Before we get started, here's a quick tip. If you wanna learn how to make cool fixtures just like this one, you can go to our academy. We have a whole fixturing series the Art of Fixturing, which will show you everything you need to know to make cool fixtures just like this. This fixture is made up of five different components. We have our base plate, which is this large monoplate down here. Then we have our subplates, 
which are much smaller. On this particular subplate, we have Mighty Bite Pitbull clamps that we're gonna use to clamp into this material. This allows us to take our raw material and just place it into our subplate with no previous machining to simply take our material and put it directly into our machine. So let me show you how it works. First, we're gonna take four pieces of material and put it in our subplate. We're gonna take our first piece, make sure it's nice and deburred so it sits correctly in our subplate. Then you just go ahead and just place it directly against the stop. You always wanna make sure that's pushed down and over. Take each of our pieces, put them in. Once we have it in, then all we need to do is lock down our pit bulls. As you can see, I'm tightening down the screw and the Mighty Bite pit bull clamp is moving into our material. Once I have all four pieces nice and tight, this subplate is actually ready to go onto our base plate. And you can do this while the machine is running. Once we have it hand tightened, I'm gonna go back and retorque it to a specific number that we specified for this specific machining application. Now that I have all my parts torqued down, we can take our subplate and place it on our base plate. To put it on the base plate, I'm gonna show you that there are these specific holes that we have. These holes that are put into our subplate are actually gonna slide over this Mighty Byte ID expansion pin. Once we slide it over it, then we can actually screw the lock down pin and it will hold our subplate down to our base plate. Simply grab it. Now that we have it down, we're actually gonna go in and expand all of these pins individually. Just gonna take my socket, screw them all down. So the pin, as you screw it down, it has a ball lock that actually expands onto a liner and that liner actually pulls it down. So you're getting a perfect alignment and you're also pulling the subplate down to the base plate. These lockdown pins actually apply 100 pounds of force. So you can hold pretty much anything. Once you have it nice and tight, you're ready to machine. So now I'm gonna show you a little bit more of the mechanics of why this fixture is awesome. As you can see, we have these different levels. I'm gonna take my material off, I'm gonna place it on the other levels. Our material just slides right in. As you can see, all of our material is sitting in different elevated positions. Now I want you to imagine that we have the rest of our fixture filled up, that we have 16 parts throughout the whole fixture. Oh, Stuart, good job, and good yeah, job yeah. explaining. It's something complicated that we're trying to make easy, right? But one thing I want to do real quick is I actually want to like tilt this bad boy, right? So I'm going to pivot this thing over here, put it down, Oh, nice and rigid, right? So check this out. Looking from this position, you got the bottom level and the top level, right? You got parts across, parts across. Now, if you're on a five axis, you can just rotate it, right? So you can just basically rotate it. Boom, you got parts across. It's the exact same thing. So when actually zeroing the offsets, we don't have to like zero every single one 
we can actually zero one plate and then actually copy it and drop it. And then in our program, we rotate 180 and run it again. All right, so now it machines everything on the top. Boom, 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 boom. Now here's the trick, okay? And this is what separates it from a single station vise. You flip it up on end, and now look at the levels. This is very important right here. So the spindle is up here. This thing can rotate up. It can do all the side work and all the side work. And then after machining all of these parts, it can back off and drop to the lower level and do the side work on these guys because they're sticking out farther, right? Yeah. So it's just your mind thinking about how you can fixture something so you can hold as many parts as possible and actually do the entire part and the side work, come out and drop down and do multiple layers, again, all at the same time, treating the machine like a true five axis, but with a production fixture plate. All right, so Stuart, amazing job, all right? When we were actually loading all of the fixtures and put it on here, we had Jeff actually running this machine. And he calculated that it was quicker to actually load the material into the machine than it was to actually lock down the plates because we only had four parts. So depending on how many parts, you'll have to calculate and figure out what's quicker, load the plates outside or load the plates inside. If you had 20 parts, as Stuart explained, then it would be much quicker to load everything on the outside of the machine and then go into the machine where the entire fixture is locked down, drop it in, and just lock down five pins. And that's quick and efficient. All right, to end this vlog, I just want to end with a word. A lot of people look at these complex, crazy aerospace parts. A lot of parts that we actually show or other people show, and they're like, that's where the money's at. But I also don't want you to lose sight of the fact that when you look at easy, simple parts, in this case, one that has multiple features around it, you can actually make a killing by figuring out how to produce these parts efficiently. And that's all in the fixture. All right, so make sure that you look at both sides of the coin and you understand each one and its greatness, right? Producing crazy parts that are one-offs or 10-offs or that you're now fixturing so you can actually run tens of thousands of parts in production runs in a way that you can produce the work here without having it outsourced, all right? Stuart, thank you very much. As always, yeah. boom, you killed it. All right, we will see you in the next vlog. Boom.